Oh, it's Christmas, all right. It is Christmas, guys. And our birthday present, our Christmas present, rather, is that CMC is fully activated. Dude, Rubik is activated, man. Like, he's going crazy. This is a fat patch, though, to be fair, guys. This is actually a fat patch. Like, I'm honestly surprised. I was actually expecting the balance patch to be very, very minor, right? I thought it wasn't going to really be much, but, dude, they actually kind of swung, right? They actually kind of took a swing. You know what I'm saying, guys? So. Well, well, well. Did any of you guys see this one coming? Because I actually didn't. Uh, I wasn't expecting a balance patch of this nature so soon. But that is exactly what we have here, chat. We have a pretty significant balance patch as well. And actually, thank you very much, Mike. We actually have an even better version of this right away. We have the wiki edition, which is going to be uh, make it a little bit easier for us to actually see the uh, the act what's actually going on here with these skills. And actually, I want to just right at the start, guys. I just want to go over this item here. Uh, Ruin the Golemans. This is actually a world versus world change here. In fact, if you can believe that, guys. Um, there was a really uh... sorry green screen. There was a weird interaction with Golemans. The the golem that spawns from it actually had fifty thousand HP, and it gives good stats like power and ferocity. So in world versus world, you could stack these runes in your group and essentially have like a massive health buffer and additional health in your zerg. So basically, your entire zerg would run this and just add fifty k HP per player, right? Um, to these golems, and now they've nothing. So this is actually. Like, they're on point, right? Like, ArenaNet is actually paying attention, and that's impressive to me. Like, that is actually impressive, in my opinion, that they have, like, they have that kind of awareness, like, talking to CMC, CMC getting involved in the World Force community. I love that. They're actually responding. Awesome stuff. So let's leap into the skills here. So we have a few skills, and it's kind of, the some of these are PvP focused, and some of these are world versus world focused, and some of them are, of course, focused to both game modes, um, to an extent there as well. But here's the interesting thing, and you're going to see this as a theme as we go over a lot of these changes, is that some of them have some very interesting ramifications for PvE as well, actually. Because we're seeing some of this stuff be made baseline, and this is ultimately... What we see here, elementals, not really much to say. They basically just they just um made convergence the tooltip a little bit better. But here's a fun one. Of course, they're trying to actually uh, essentially nerf this down a little bit in world versus world, like make the tempest sustain not quite as good. Um, because now tempestuous aria it used to give you ten target shouts. Now it doesn't. Now it will only apply might and weakness to the enemies. However, right? However, what do we see here? We see that the baseline is 10 targets in PvE. And this, guys, is absolutely insane, right? And let me explain why. Because on Tempest, right, where's my heal build on Tempest? Let's get this, uh, let's get into the mixer. Right? Where is my, wait, what is that? I've got a weird build here, but it's got healing power on it. And that's all that's important, guys. Okay, now, baseline in PvE, you have 10 target shouts. Like, that is absolutely insane to have this. Like, your healing output is crazy, but even better, you can now, you don't even have to take this trait, guys. You don't have to take it. You can actually take invigorating torrents. So now you've got baseline 10 target shout, and that means that, oh yes, Elementalist now has 10 Target Vigor. This makes Boon Ellie so damn good. Oh, oh! It's the day of the hybrids! Because, guys, this means on your condition Boon Ellie, so the full Viper build, now you don't even take this trait. You don't need to because you've got so much might application anyway, especially when you combine it with other builds like a Hollowsmith or a Boon Herald. Now you've got Invigorating Torrents as well! Okay, so this means Boon Ellie gives 25 might, okay, gives Fury, also gives vigor as well to 10 targets and benches over 30k DPS. This build is insane how good this is. This is ridiculous in PvE, right? Like, if you aren't starting to think about running stuff like Boon Ellie, this hybrid build, you're actually insane. Like, you have, your brain is not functioning correctly. This is a subtle change, but it's so significant because now you are freed up and you can take this unbelievably powerful trait, Invigorating Torrents. And that's fantastic. 
It really is. It absolutely is. Heal Ellie also gets buffed here. Because obviously on Heal Ellie, you would normally have to run this trait too. Because 10 target is very, very strong. Now that that's base, again, Heal Ellie is back on the 10 target Vigor Train. But like 100% uptime. Like this build won't do uptime on its own. It needs um, it needs help, right? It needs other classes like Chrono, Boon Herald to actually give 100% uptime of Vigor with this. Uh, and maybe throw in a Druid there too, right? This needs that, okay? But the heal early build it can just do straight 100%, right? Like, easily on its own now. Because you're going to have Harrier gear or Minstrel gear or whatever, right? And combined with Boon Extension, you're easily going to have 100% Vigor on 10 targets. And that is something that is kind of unique, right? Druid can do it with Chrono, but not on its own. Like, Sun Spirit isn't amazing uptime. You need it. Druid needs help. Ellie doesn't. And Vigor uh, is very strong, guys. Like, watch my Boon uh, video guide, guys. Boon guide. You see, we're cross-promoting here. Um, the Boon guide will tell you how unbelievably powerful um vigor really is like having 50 percent uh endurance regeneration so that's just way more dodges like you can just dodge 50 percent more often essentially is unbelievably powerful like that that's all the changes for ellie by the way guys like that actually is uh the end of that as you can see here but ho, 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 ho. oh dearie me there's another class that begins with an e and it's uh engineer oh yes and nerfed Bomb kit damage down. This is actually a world versus world change because bomb spammer NG is very, very strong. It does a lot of damage, like bomb scrapper essentially, like and a lot of other engineer builds are incredibly powerful. So this is a really good change. It, honestly, it's, I love to see some actual stuff being addressed at world versus world. It's really, really cool. It really is. And we also see these other changes too. Freeze grenade, poison grenade, grenade barrage, lesser grenade barrage, just nerfed across the board. And this is significant, guys. Like, as bear in mind, nerfing a 0.1 coefficient is a 33% nerf, right? Like, they are taking that down, um, you know, uh, by a third, essentially, right? Like, that is going down a lot. Because every single hit had that coefficient. Now, it's down a lot. Like, the damage of these two abilities just got destroyed. Well, these four abilities got annihilated, right? This is actually a very good balance decision, though, on these grenades. Freeze grenade, poison grenade in particular. Because chill and poison are very strong effects in their own, right? Reducing the healing. Like, you can deny banner reses, right? Chill is just a very annoying condition to snare your opponents. So these changes are amazing. Like, and they're also not overkill. To be very clear here, guys, Engineer is still very strong. Engineer with grenades is still going to be run, I think, in PvP, in high-level play. Will it always be run, though? Definitely not. Um, and in fact, because we already saw people moving away from Hollow, it's not mandatory anymore. Now it really isn't mandatory, right? Like, now this is, like, a choice, a strong choice, but not necessary. And we also might see some experimentation, where we saw Sage Putter, um... Uh, in the daily AT, play some different setups, play with a different ho Holosmith build. Will that stick? Honestly, I still think people will go with grenades. I think the mechanic of grenades is still strong. Having Grenadier, having that extra radius, the really fast projectile speed, and just like the, the anti-kite potential, being able to throw the nades at range and still deal massive damage. The auto attack is still super strong. It's just like the utility grenades are still down. So grenades are still very good and it will see play um, in PvP. Um, but it's definitely toned down to a level where it's going to be a lot more uh, easy to deal with. And this is a huge edge. Nerfing explosive engines. Dude, look. 1.25 coefficient on a dodge roll. Thank you, CMC. This had it coming. Honestly, this could be nerfed harder, particularly because of flashbang. So explosive endurance means that every, whenever you dodge, your next explosion deals bonus damage and has some other effects, including a blind or a daze, depending if you trait for that later on down explosives and explosives with stuff like flashbang, right? This is disgusting, right? It's still good, guys, right? And it's a 0.9 coefficient. That's still quite a lot of damage, right? Uh, dude, 1.25. Seriously, are they having a laugh here? Right, what kind of joke is that? But yeah, good change there. Very good change. Like, on top of the, like, the, um... The thing about Explosive Vengeance is that dodging and then doing damage is kind of a very obnoxious mechanic, like, right off the bat. You can obviously play around it, but then you stack that on with stuff like a daze and a blind, and you're turning into, like, serious, this is very annoying territory. So, again, an amazing change. CMC swings and CMC scores. I love to see it, guys. Engineer changes, excellent. Okay, and I love that World vs. World getting some love here, too. Like, that might honestly be a little conservative, right? I think you could probably do a bit more. I, however, I think with World vs. World, they are very worried... Um, they're really, really worried about making World Buster World too bunkery. I think they want to keep the combat killy, right? As, uh, and they don't want to go overboard with nerfing the damage, even though it is very high, to be fair, guys, right? It's very, very high damage. But I think that's kind of the rationale behind keeping it, uh, relatively, uh, you know, relatively, uh, you know, not too crazy on the nerf there as well. All right, Guardian is coming up next. And again, these are actually... 
World versus world changes only. And this was actually because, of course, the Core Guardian and Dragon Hunter uh, have been kind of taking over the World vs. Sword meta. It turns out that Staff and Sword of Justice, it's very hard when you can't dodge it uh, and you take a lot of damage because there's so many effects that you can't dodge. So these abilities, like these mass a ranged AoEs, are actually unbelievably powerful, right? These pulsing AoEs are so strong in World vs. World that you basically just run like a Marauder Zerk Guardian and you delete people. Like, so Staff is a support weapon. Oh, no, guys. Staff obliterates people with this stuff. You know, you self stack 25 might with the zeal trait line with this trait here, which has now been nerfed. So what this does is that every time justice procs, you get might and double might if you're on scepter. And they're just bringing that down across the board with Guardian. Like Guardian just getting toned down right there as well. And these are significant too. This is a lot. Like look at these numbers, guys, right? Like look at these numbers. Like this is a big reduction here. Right? We're seeing 33% pretty much across the board on all of these stuff. That is big, right? But look, before anyone panics, before anyone panics, does this mean this is a bad build? No, it just means it's not a stupid build, right? <laughs> so nobody panic. If you're a core guardian main, you're still going to play this, right? Like the dragon in the build, still going to play it, right? They've just taken it down a little bit. And again, bear in mind, guys, in world versus world the power level is still probably too high even with this because there's so many players, everything scales insanely. So I think this is just the start, and I hope this is the start. Like, I'm really hopeful to Arena here that this is just the beginning, right? Um, uh, of, of the changes that we are going to see here. Like, to, to all the classes, like, everything in World of War, I think, needs to come down to just all of it. It's way too powerful. There's way too much damage, way too many boons, way too many corrupts, all that stuff. It's just completely out of control. Like, everything's overstacked. So great changes. Now, there is one thing that is missing here. Why are there no Guardian changes in PvP? Like, Firebrand's not in a great spot right now. It's a bit not good. Now, to be fair, nerfing everything else, particularly Hollow and Thief, is going to make Firebrand better. So, I think it, it's... It, Firebrand's been buffed because it didn't get nerfed and everything else got nerfed, if that makes any sense. Um, but there's also the other end of that spectrum. Like, Dragon Hunter in PvP is kind of rearing its ugly head, right? Like, with Burn Dragon Hunter being incredibly powerful, just dealing a ridiculous amount of DPS. This is particularly dangerous um, in, in kind of lower-ranked play. But people don't really have the ability to play against it um, quite as effectively. They, they really kind of struggle with that. And I, I think maybe Burn Dragon Hunter didn't really get addressed because um, maybe uh, CMC is anticipating, and we'll see this a little bit later on, like when we get to the Thief and Rev stuff, um, we might, maybe CMC is expecting Burn Dragon Hunter to actually get shut down a little bit um, by some of the changes here. Like, you know, it's true that it can, it, Burn Dragon Hunter can definitely screw over Revenant quite hard, but Power Rev also has the ability to chase it down very effectively, reveal it, and then kill it. Like, Power Rev can actually be a threat to Burn Dragon Hunter, I think. I know people say, oh yeah, but you just get one shot. This is true, but bear in mind, there's no stun break, and and unblockable on the power of can actually be a danger uh, to this dragon under because the build it might force you to play a much more defensive setup on the dragon under build uh, simply because you're, you're going to have to contend with these power heralds chasing you down now we'll have to see we will have to see how that goes but yeah i'd like to see some more changes to guardian like i think burn dragon hunter or just like the burn builds in general are a little bit silly they need to get addressed in pvp i think like i think they're still going to be good after this patch burn dragon hunter in particular i expect to see high level play we've seen the worms already experiment with that uh, in these daily automated tournaments so yeah it's still going to be very very good and that definitely needs to look at there and but uh, honestly i'm not really going to give them any problems here Right, because I love that they're addressing World vs. World, right? I, I would love to get back into World vs. World and, and want to play the game and have fun. And I, and I think this is definitely a really strong step. This is this is a stride in the right direction. But yeah, stuff like Permeating Wrath and honestly, Eternal Armory need a look. And the spirit, the way the spirit weapons work, they need a look uh, in PvP. But that's it for a Guardian uh, as well. In PvE, nothing changed, obviously. But this is, again, this is mostly a competitive balance patch. Like, there's some side effects in PvE, but this is a competitive patch again. Okay, stay tuned for PvE, guys. Like, that's, you know, you got to wait for next year for that one. Necromancer. I, right. Okay. Well of Darkness. Let me just give you guys the rundown of what this skill does. Right? Well of Darkness does massive damage in World vs. World, chills, and blinds. How did it ever get past QA that it did nearly as much damage as Well of Suffering as well, and has a similar cooldown? Dude, they could have gone further. Uh, honestly, they could do more than this, right? They, they could actually do more than this. Like, no joke. Like, th this is probably still more damage than it should do, right? Like, I, I think that you'll probably see less triple well now because of this, right? Maybe you would see less triple well, 
um, because of, uh, you know, because this has been nerfed significantly, but man, like, this ability is disgusting, right? Like, it's a very, very good skill, and it has it coming, right? Like, spamming damage, chill, and blind, not a lot of fun. It's kind of kept in check by stuff like Scrapper, and Scrapper, I think, hasn't really been touched, well, it hasn't been touched at all, so you'll be able to kind of cleanse those condies away fairly effectively, but, I uh, don't know, like, I'm not a big fan of Having these abilities that do a bunch of damage and also apply some incredibly unpleasant conditions to you as well. We see a similar thing here with Well of Corruption, right? Like, you, you're kind of seeing a bit of purity of purpose right here. There's a little bit of purity of purpose um, going on with this stuff. It's saying like, it does damage at, or it corrupts wounds, not both, right? And yeah, this is again good. Just take down the power level on Necro, just reduce it down a little bit, and then away we go. Like, I, I think again, we're gonna, this is like the start of these changes here as well, like a little bit of a start of these changes, um, and we will probably see more, probably in particular to Scourge a little bit, and eventually Reaper will probably get the hammer, like the quickness uptime, uh, like the massive extra ferocity you get while you're in Shroud. All these things are probably going to get addressed. Like, addressing the Boon Rip is actually kind of difficult, like, you'd have to like significantly increase cooldown. Downs, I think, um, in World vs. World only. But the problem with that is, is that unless you do that at the same time as reducing all the support and boon application, then you're essentially going to have a very, very bunkery and slow meta. Which again is why they're being fairly cautious with um, with these changes because they don't want to make World vs. World just a complete bunker fiesta. Like that is worse. Like you know, as as annoying as it is to get one shot by a massive necro spike or a massive revenant spike or something like that, it is better than just kind of pounding into each other and just never dying because there's just too much healing and not enough damage to actually get through, right? Um, so I think we're going to see almost like a ping pong. I think maybe next time they'll hit all the supports, right? They're hitting the damage a bit now, then they'll hit the support. They'll kind of bounce back and forwards then. This kind of approach to balancing the game, in my opinion, you'll notice they've essentially only nerfed damage um, in World vs. World, not really support as such. A little bit with uh, the Draconic Echo changes and the LE changes as well. Like, supports come down a little bit too, but the damage has been targeted very significantly, right? And this is just the first step on the long road. Well, you know, speaking of roads, we'll get to that in a little bit, right? A long, uh, a long road to actually making uh, World vs. World significantly better. So again, I I've just got to tip my hat. I, I really do. Um, well done. A CMC and well done reading it. Like, this is fantastic, right? I think the World vs. World community is going to see this as a sign of hope and just, wow, you know, someone out there at that company is looking out for us. I love it. Fantastic. So, Revenant. Oh, ah, this is such a juicy one for all three game modes, really. Um, you know, all three game modes are getting some of it. Oh, Oh, yes. Look at that. I just want to go straight to it. Coalescence of Ruin, Power Coefficient down to 1.15, right? That is a big nerf there uh, because, of course, this is how, you know, uh, to, you know to, to clarify this, and I probably should have said this earlier, Power Coefficient means, like, for every point of power you have, this ability does 1.5 more damage, right? Okay, so bear in mind that's five targets, right, that this is getting reduced on, and it's a 0.35 damage reduction, right? So if you've got, say, 2,000, 3,000 power, you are losing a lot of damage per swing. You're essentially losing like 5,000 damage per cast, right? Maybe even more with a critical strike. Because, of course, crits will then be multiplied right, by, by this damage. Um, so you're losing a lot of damage with this. Uh, they have reduced the cooldown to compensate for that. They, 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 uh, honestly, I think it could have probably stayed up, to be frank, actually. Um, and, you know, you see something similar here with Phase Smash as well. Still doing a lot of damage. I think, it, I think it's okay not to nerf Phase Smash as much because it's more of a skill shot, right? A bit harder to land. It's got that delay on it. So it's more reactable. Like, you can dodge it a little bit better, right? And it's just a slower move in general. So I think that is okay um, to kind of leave it like that. Um, but, yeah. Oh, Incense Response uh, might going down too. Uh, and then also inspiring wasn't damage going down. Honestly, it could maybe even do less than that. Like, th this skill is just such an oversight skill. Like, but let's talk about the damage stuff here first, guys. Like, for, for World versus World, right? Like, Revenant is honestly a bit of a plague, uh, Herald in particular, um, because it just does so much DPS. They actually, uh, may I think they should put this skill back to how it was. I think, um, Coalescence, yeah, it's Revenant Hammer 2, guys. It's like the big, um, rectangular AoE that goes in front. I'd like to see this skill actually revert to its previous functionality of, um of basically doing less damage the closer you are to the target. I think that would actually be better for World vs. World in particular. Right, They actually change it so it does the same damage at every single... It has like three sections of it, right? It's got like three rectangles that spawn sequentially. I'd like to see it actually punish you for using it in melee range um, instead of like just being the same damage everywhere. Right now, it's a very weird skill. Like you can just kind of spam it in melee and delete people. I think it would be better if it was more of a range weapon and it does have that kind of uh, fall-off dynamic to it. Like it even... They can even make it like one AoE and make it like... A, I a long bone, like actually have like a very smooth curve there or something like that. That could be the way to go there. But yeah, this is an amazing hit. Honestly, one of the best changes. 
right? Uh, one of the best changes they've done. And, and yes, like to be clear, guys, like Rev is not going anywhere um, for it for World versus World. Like it's still going to be very, very good. It's going to apply this boon application, right? Although not as much anymore as we can see here, guys. Draconic Echo. This trait no longer increases the maximum number of targets of passive facet skills. So that means that you don't have 10 target boons anymore in World versus World while you're on your DPS build. Great. Okay, like just reduce the boon spam a little bit as well. Like as you can see, just slowly taking down the support too. But that's not all. Because read this change. And we're gonna we're gonna dive over to PvE for just a moment here. Actually, no, we're not. No, I can't, because I'm gonna talk I'm gonna talk about it for ages, right? So I can't do it. No, I can't. I'm still. Oh, man. Spoiler alert for all the uh, Herald fans in PvE. This is so good for you. Oh, oh, my goodness me. But never mind that. Because we'll talk about the PvP and World Wars also, and then we'll get on to Draconic. In fact, I'm going to do Renegade first, because I'm not going to be able to stop talking about it. So it's actually going to have to be wait until after Renegade as well, because it's so good. All right, so Inspiring Reinforcement. Again, I, I started talking about this briefly. Very good change. Like, this damage is probably still too high. This is an amazingly oversight skill. It applies weakness. It does damage, right? It gives pulsing stability. I mean, come on. That's a good skill, right? It's way too good, right? So, yeah, great change. It shouldn't be doing damage, honestly, because it's such a strong effect. Like, stability, particularly in world versus world, is obviously essential. Uh, in PvP as well, of course, it's very, very strong. Uh, you see it played on the Renegade build, uh, the Duelist build that gets played a lot. And it's still seen some play as well. Like, it's gone over to Menders now. Oh, my goodness. Stay tuned on that. And we'll talk about the uh, the Revenant, uh, the Renegade stuff in a little bit there as well, of course. But, yeah. And the stability duration is now down. Because, essentially, it pulses every second. So, instead of stacking up to kind of two, three stacks, it will only stack to one stack, which is massive. That means you can actually lock a Rev, right? And this is actually the vulnerability, by the way, guys, um, of... Renegade to an extent. It actually does have a bit of problems with dealing with CC, right? The Jalice, the stun break on it is the elite skill, right? Which is kind of a bit of a pain to use. It's a very expensive energy cost. And of course, on Kala, again, high energy cost as well, because it's a 35 energy cost as well to actually break out of stuns. So this actually significantly uh, weakens um, Renegade, right? Um, in PvP in particular. Uh, and in World vs. World, of course, you, you were on Jalice Herald, right? Yeah, you're on Jalice um, Glint Herald. So again, just tones down the damage even more. Great. Awesome. Love that change for World Wars. And in PvP, also really good. Like, the stability spam is a really, really big problem, right? Like, there's a, a really, really big problem with this. I have 30 energy for the Kalos Stunbreak there as well. So, yeah, I, I, was, I was close, right? What can I say? I was close. But, uh, yeah. So, it is indeed, you know, that's a big, big nerf. And I think we're going to see... I think Renegade is still going to see play. And this is a theme of this patch, guys, right? It's not X-Class is deleted from the game, Right? It's that now we have options. Now we have variety. Like, yes, Renegade has been nerfed significantly. And, you know, you can have a little cry about that. But Renegade is still playable. It, just one daily AT. Will it be optimal? Will it be meta? Honestly, we'll have to see. I think there are some things that could potentially uh, compete with it for that slot now. I think it is a little bit more vulnerable um, in a lot of its situations. Like, one of the things it could do really well uh, was just lock down a node and just never die. It's got loads of stability up there. Really hard to actually CC it. Could kite really well and could actually do DPS as well. Do a lot of damage. But actually, guys, now it can't. Why is that? Because Celestial Amulet is gone. And, and, and Selly Amulet was very overpowered because, like, a lot of the damage came down um, in PvP. But and a lot of the sustain, right? They removed a lot of the toughness amulets, like a lot of the healing power amulets. But Selly stayed, and it has power, toughness, healing, condi damage, right? And vitality as well. So it's got basically every defensive stat in large quantities. Like, pretty much Celestial Amulet was, like, almost, like, strictly better than some else. Because Knight's Amulet, um, sorry, not Knight's. Yeah, Knight's Amulet got removed. And then Powered Amulet kind of got nerfed to 400 toughness and 400 vitality. And Selly actually has more toughness than Vitality. It's 440. And now that's gone from PvP. And that was a massive part of why Renegade was so good in PvP, guys. Uh, because it had this ability to be tanky, sustain itself with the healing power, and do significant power and condition damage, right? Because it applies some torment on the longbow too, on seven shot and all that sort of stuff, which did good damage, right? That was non-zero damage that it was dealing out to you while having all the ferocity, power, precision, all that stuff too. Stacking 25 might, having crit chance as well, um, if it's got full endurance too, like from Kala. So it would just obliterate you um, if it actually caught you. And now that's going to be significantly harder to actually do because you're going to, we're seeing Mender Amulet being used and that's no ferocity, right? Uh, that's, um, 
Uh, that's no uh, condition damage as well. So you've lost a lot of your damage by running this build. You still do have the might stacking power, so you can you can still do DPS and it will be playable. But I think we might see some experimentation, right? Like Shiro, I think um, Kala has been targeted with this patch, right? I think they're trying to incentivize Renegade play to not stop, right? To actually go to Shiro instead. So instead of playing Kala, play Shiro Jealous. So you can still have this build, this build that can duel, that can team fight a little bit, this versatile build, right? Uh, but... Not AIDS, not cancerous, like Kala. Because Kala is a big problem for PvP. And we, we see them even directly target this here, right? Uh, all for one, protection up them. This is whenever you put a spirit down, now you get only two seconds of prop, which is, a, again, 33% nerf. Huge nerf, right? And protection is very good in PvP, and that takes it down significantly, right? That's going to be a lot. That's going to be a big deal. Healing. Honestly, the healing gets slapped as well. Like, the lifesteal is down, again, by... We're kind of looking like 20% there, I'd say. 25, yeah, it's kind of 20%. Again, healing down on Breaker as a Bastion. Again, like we're kind of looking at about 20% there. That's big. Because this heal skill is amazing. Like, it brings a lot of healing and then pulses healing and reduces your condition damage that you take by 50% for the duration of the spirit while you stand in it. The soul keep, again, no cooldown on that lifesteal, right? So you just bam, bam, bam. But you get a seven shot, whoa, you're going to heal for like 2,000 off that. Now, again, reduce. Steadfast rejuvenation. Also, very strong. Like, for every point of upkeep you have with steadfast rejuvenation, now, um, you are, you're going to heal for seven health left as a base value. Now, to be fair, you will actually probably end up healing a similar amount because you take Mender's Amulet on Renegade if you go for the full bunker build. But if you take Demolisher and you still run the same build, your healing is a lot because that is seven per point of upkeep, right? And typically you can be running around with like seven upkeep, right? Like seven or eight upkeep, um, you know, with stuff like the, um, Impossible odds, for example, or the Jalice Hammers, which in turn heal you too. So you can actually be healing hundreds of health per second just by maintaining this. And again, that's now down too. So yeah, sustain is down. The damage of the build is down, which was very overtuned. But I've, I, again, I really want to point this out. This is a very intelligent set of changes, right? CMC is switched on, guys. This is a very intelligent set of changes, in my opinion. It's targeted. It's measured. It's thought through, and it's not just smite as boon, deleted, right? It's, you're still good, but now other things can be good as well, right? Other things can now compete with this role, and maybe it nudges out some of the bad design. It's targeting the bad design of Kala, right? And that's fantastic. Great changes to Rev. I think even if you're a Rev player, you should be happy. I, 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 am, I, I don't think Kala Rev is that much fun to play anyway, so if anything, I think the Renegades, like, you know, the French Worms in particular, I, I know they weren't a super big fan of that build. I think they'd rather play Shiro, so we'll have to see if they actually uh, go and experiment around that, guys. Look, I'm just going to say it. I've got to say it, guys. Like, CMC, it's him. He, he's gone. Your builds are gone, but they're actually not gone. Cross that out. Your builds are balanced. CMC, he snaps. He scores. I love it. So, of course, Draconic Echo. You might go, wait, okay? Now we get Draconic Echo kind of for free, right? Now, oh my god, you know, we get, we now have 10 target facets automatically, right? We can look here. We can see that our facet of darkness is now giving 10 target fury for free for nothing, right? It's doing that completely of its own accord, right? Wow, that's really good. Now, Draconic Echo, to be clear, guys, it's still good. Actually, this is still a strong trait. And if you're a dedicated boon rev, right? And you you're, you actually have to provide permanent protection. You're still probably going to want, want to run Draconic Echo, right? Oh, th this is such good design, actually. Oh, my God. Oh, dude, the design is so good on this. Oh, oh man. Uh, this is actually what old Anet tastes like, man. Like, this is really nice. Okay, uh, skill design here. Because of course, guys, if you're going to um, if you're going to go ahead and play full boon like diviner, you're, well, actually maybe not even not, not diviner. But if you if you're like full zerk and you want to still apply permanent boons, you're probably going to want to take draconic echo because you use these abilities and that extends the boons out, right? Okay, and you still got the boons. However. If you have other boons, if you play more of a hybrid style, so full zerk, maybe you've got a druid in your group. Okay, maybe you've got a, a boon Ellie in your group, right? That kind of stuff. And you don't, and you're not the only boon applier. You've got a chrono to extend the boons, right? And you're not the only one applying the boons. Now, you can run forceful persistence. And look at that, ladies and gentlemen. 13% modifier, right? When you've got a channeled ability. 13%. And for every herald skill, 4%. And that stacks. Oh my god. This is a big, fat DPS increase for this hybrid herald. So now, you can spew out boons. And, dude, this benchmark, what is this going to bench? This is going to be... 
It's going to be nearly 30k, right? Surely it's going to be pretty damn close to 30k without, of course, stuff like Assassin's Presence being taken into account, your lifesteal being taken into account on your Shiro F2 there as well. 30, wait, it's being, wait, it was 28k before patch, 34k bench? Oh my goodness me. Wow, that is actually insane. Now, this was already um, used in records, right? Now, to be fair, that was, I think, the record version of this build might still go towards, like, the more boon application uh, instead of actually going for um, more damage, because I think it, will, it a lot of the times, the boon herald is so good because it can do damage and apply these permanent boons, and I think it might still require, right? Okay, it might still require to go ahead with um, Draconic Echo there and said, but honestly, maybe it doesn't. I'm actually not too versed on how it actually plays out in the records. I'm sure some guys in the chat can help us out with that. But if you can get away with running this trait, that is just like, wow, that is a significant, this is a very big DPS increase, guys. Like, you know, we're talking, well, I'm being told now it's over 30,000 DPS. And that's with the Shiro, right? That's with Frosty. That is with an additional kind of like 1k, 2k DPS from having this lifestyle in your triangle, which also sustains your group there as well, right? This is unbelievable unbelievably a powerful build amazing in open world too of course because you still have dance of death for massive lifesteal wow this is incredible like this makes the hype dude we got it mellow we gotta do the hybrid comp we need to do the hybrid comp stream because the hybrids the ellie hybrid got buffed like the uh the rev hybrid got buffed. They, these two changes like they're like accidental as well like they did this like Almost like for free with the P with the particularly the world versus world nurse PVE just got like so fucking so many these two changes that make it so spicy the Ellie and the Rev oh man and I'm very excited about this guys because I love this type of design Aridna if you're listening I love this type of design right the way that this plays out where it promotes having players performing multiple roles doing multiple functions within a group I think is fantastic design it really really is to have decisions based on what's in your group like to, to kind of change your build based on how things are going on and you know you can f now this also this also actually fits into other compositions way better because normally it was kind of like a little bit overkill then you kind of you kind of ran this it was a bit overkill to run this build but now that you can run this trait as well and you just get like a whole bunch of free damage because the thing is guys you had to run draconic echo on boon rev because it gave you the 10 target now that the 10 target is free this means that you can fit into basically any composition on this build and be an asset right you still to be clear guys before the patch you were it's so the people didn't realize that now you're going to be pumping right and you, it, you you're much more flexible in the way you can fit into these groups. You're not kind of like pigeonholed into, into only very specific compositions, right? To be maximally efficient, right? Okay, now in every group, you are an asset on this build. Like there's pretty much no group that will be like, wow, it really sucks that we have a Boon Rev here. No, Boon Rev is here, guys. I've got to get a video going on this, man. I've got to get a Boon Rev video going, man. We've got to make that happen, right? I I've got to go big on this. This is getting crazy. This is out of control, guys, right? This is, uh, it's too much, right? But yeah, there is the power. Of, yeah, this is a power build, guys. There's the power build, um, uh, the power rev or the boon rev video. And j j I guess I can actually, okay, this can go in the video too, actually. We can have like a very quick like bonus meme here, guys. The bonus meme uh, is that you actually just basically run this full Zerk, right? Like you just go full Zerker. Uh, with Scholar Rune, and then you have uh, Force Air Sigil, actually, I believe, and then you have Staff there as well, just full Zerk. You don't actually need, you can run Diviner, but you don't actually need to run Diviner, because typically you'll have, say, a Chronomancer um, giving out boons as well, and if you don't have a Chronomancer, you can just still run Draconic Echo and it will still work, right? But yeah, this is actually a really, really good build. Um, it does a lot of damage now, if you can get away with force of persistence, it's very, very flexible too. Like the flexibility of the build is significantly increased. And there's also multiple variants, right? You can, yeah, you can, yeah, if you want, you can do strength runes, right? If you need to apply might. This is very, very good, guys. Very, very good. Double sword and stuff. That's correct. Yes, double sword and stuff. I will try and make a build video on this because honestly, in my opinion, the Boon Ellie and Boon Rev are absolute fire right now for raids. They are so damn good, right? They are so damn good. They really, really are. I love it, guys. I love to see it. So, that's all the stuff there for Renegade. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. I guess I can yeah, briefly talk about incense rewards. Yeah, might stacking is really, really strong. And uh, Rev was able to basically do it on its own by just perma-stacking Fury and then getting 25 might. Yeah, this is a very good change. This actually is a 75% uh, nerf. Five stacks for eight seconds down to two to four. So, that's obviously like a... Well, actually, it's even more than that. It's like a mega, mega nerf there as well. This is good. This means, again, Rev is going to be more reliant on a support class to give it boons instead of just like having like permanent 25 might because of all, you know, just gaining Fury permanently. So, yeah, this, this trait was actually insane, right? Like, this trait is...
is so strong. Like, it kind of dodged the nerf. It got nerfed in PvP, the, basically the same change. Uh, yeah, so this is just basically equalizing that out to match the PvP version. So yeah, very good change there too. Yeah, great changes, Trev. Well, very well done, CMC. Right. Thief! Oh, it's been a long time coming. Oh, yes, it has. For so, so long, Consume Plasma has been the blight of, of Mesmers. Right, you know, Thief has always been a counter to Mesmer. Right, and this is something that I was talking about with the Arena Labs guys the other day, actually. Like, Thief, in a way, counters its competition, right? Like, it counters Mesmer. Like, the other thing that can often fill the Thief role, the map control role with Portal and good mobility, was, of course, Mirage, right? Mirage, Chronomancer, uh, Mesmer, in general. And Thief countered that. So it countered its competition, right? It was good against what could do its job. And that might actually be taking a bit of a slap there. Now, bear in mind, this is still a very, very good uh, skill. And look... If anyone tells you that Thief is dead, right, just tell them to be quiet, right? And, and I don't know, like, go back to Silver. Because believe me, Thief is not dead. Has it been a pretty hard nerf, actually? Yeah, this is pretty damn significant. Uh, and it's true that Shadow Arts hasn't been touched. But bear in mind, guys, Shadow Arts is actually kind of phasing out, right? It, it's phasing out a little bit. Like, it is still seeing play, but Deadly Arts is actually kind of um, something that we're seeing more thieves play in high-level gameplay. We are still seeing SA occasionally, and I agree it is still an obnoxious trait line, and I would like to see it addressed. But I think they don't, uh, you know, CMC, again, he's being patient. He's being a little bit tactical, right? Like, he's not gonna just, like, delete something right right off the bat. It's kind of like, okay, let's do these changes. Maybe we do them uh, more in, in a few months, right? We'll see if we need to do that. Like, maybe we can tweak that a little bit. But on the glob change, this ability is very, very overstacked anyway, and it's still going to be a strong skill. But this is a big, big reduction, right? Like, th this is very, very significant, guys. Um, you know, uh, with, with this. Like, this is a big, big nerf. The durations of these boons are down significantly, right? Like, it is a significant nerf here, guys, in terms of these uptimes, right? Like, if, okay, I, I've actually got the old skill. Uh, how do I got the old skill? Oh, wait, does anyone have the old version of it? Because we can see exactly how much of a nerf this was, right? I, I believe this is actually, on a lot of these uptimes, it's essentially a 50% nerf on a lot of this stuff, right? Uh, in terms of the actual duration, the resistance used to be two seconds. Uh, you know, the, you know, this is a big, big, big change. Um, this is going to give Thief a... It's still going to have a good... Uh, a still a good matchup into stuff like Mesmer, and it will still be powerful at, you know, doing the plus stuff. But into this Mesmer stuff, that is a big, big reduction. Like, one second of resistance, two seconds of prot, right? That is... It's kind of nothing, right? Like, particularly the resistance. It's going to give you, like, that momentary reprieve to try and survive the Mesmer Burst or just try and wriggle out of the situation, right? Same with the stability, right? Like, one second of stab, right? Hey, guys, like, it's... I think Thief's starting to look a little bit like Firebrand at this point, right? It's got the Firebrand treatment. One second durations. Nice, right? So, yeah. Like, this is uh, a very, very good change. Probably been a long time coming. It's been a very overstack skill for a while. Like, you might, you'll still be able to maybe double proc it as well. The guys, bear in mind that with improvisation. I think we've seen some improvisation play um, in Deadly Arts or also Execution. Like, thieves kind of decide. Honestly, now that Glob's been nerfed, and especially this Essence Sap nerf as well, you might actually start to see more of an Executioner player cell. Like, where you come and, like, spike people down on the Thief, like, with a very high damage there as well. So, yeah, this is just... Good change, Thief. This one in particular, Essence Sap. This is kind of a skill that kind of missed the CMC hammer uh, back in February. It was um, it was doing a lot of damage, and it still is doing a lot of damage. They've actually halved the damage on it. And bear in mind, this is actually a very fair nerve. I know this looks harsh, guys. It's like, wow, dude, halving the power coefficient? Guys, bear in mind, this ability applies slow, right? And quite a lot of it, right, as well, right? Okay, like, the slow is not good. Like, having that slow land on you, it's very, very sad, right? Like, you're very, very sad when you get slowed, because slow... Is very, very unfortunate, guys. Okay, and now it's going to happen to you way less. So there you go. Oh, well, way less damaging, right? This was critting for like 5,000 sometimes, like 4,000, 5,000, which is very, very strong um, to have a stolen skill that also applies a very annoying condition as well, guys. Quite a lot of one second. Yeah, I actually thought it was more than that, guys. Okay, I thought it was more than one second for some reason. I, I, I don't know what happened. I guess they just deleted it. But you know what? I like it. See? Look, look, okay, it feels like a lot, right? It feels like a lot when, you know, ah, I'm so slow. Yeah, but there you go. There it is. So there's Essence Sap. Oh, dude, I... I, I <laughs> <laughs> so Signet of Agility. Ooh, I think this is actually a little bit harsh. You know? like, I feel like that's actually harsh, because this skill 
it's kind of a core part of Thief in a way. Like, it's always been a very powerful skill on Thief. It gives you a full dodge back and also removes conditions. AoE. This is AoE, like uh, Signet of Agility, guys. You know, to be clear, we'll actually just take a look at this real quick. Uh, what the actual functionality is, just to, as a recap for you guys. Um, it gives endurance and removes three condies, but it's AoE. Right? Okay, it, it, it does your, you can actually give a dodge back to your allies too, right? So, you know, if you were, say, you know, you were in a plus one situation and you're saving an ally, you can give them a dodge by using your signet. Remove their content and give them an extra dodge. Now that won't work. It will only give them a hard dodge. And that is massive, guys. Because bear in mind, right, dodges are binary. You either can or you can't, right? So this means that it doesn't guarantee that you get a dodge or your ally gets a dodge or, you know, your team gets a dodge. That is a very big nerf. Right? In my opinion. A very, very significant nerf. Alright, to this ability. Um, will it still see play? I think very likely. Like, Thief is a class that particularly if you play with Deadly Arts, you kind of need this, like, for some condition cleanse to survive the condies. But the actual, like, evasion spam is being toned. And I actually think that was a good change. Like, evasion spam is very, very unhealthy, and it's something that Thief has access to a lot of. You know, particularly on Daredevil, right? You've got a lot of evasion. Um, you know, with Shortbow, the uh, Shortbow 3 as well. And of course, your triple dodge roll, you can, you know, you get, you can steal endurance. Well, not steal endurance, but, you know, your still gives you endurance as well. So, yeah, I think this is, this is probably a fair change. Like, guys, to be very clear, when, this looks harsh, right? But bear in mind, Thief is probably the, one of the most dominant classes in the game. If not the best class in PvP. Like, previous patch, Thief was probably the best class in the game, right? Uh, I don't think any real high-level PvP here, except Syndrona. Okay? Would dispute that, right? Like, Thief was probably one of the very few mandatory classes. Like, you, you could say that Heal Warrior was also mandatory, right? But Thief was definitely mandatory. Like, you were not winning the game without Thief, right? It's not going to happen. So, it's harsh, but it's fair because of how good Thief was. And probably it will still be good. These changes are pretty good. And, dude, the, I feel like this change is actually the, the lot. This line, guys... Okay, is gonna what makes all the Thieve mains actually uninstall. Okay, seriously. Like, this is the moment that all the Thieves, like, uninstalled the game. Ouch! Oh my goodness me. Infiltrator's Arrow, which is short bow fire, basically the ability that allows you to have your mobility. Initiative cost up to eight. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> this means that even with full initiative, right, you're basically going to have to burn your entire initiative pool just to use this, right? Like, <laughs> <laughs> the hammer, dude, the hammer is coming down. And, well, to be fair, like, this is kind of one of the best abilities that Thief had, right? It allows it to move around the map faster than basically anyone. Uh, it's a really great disengage tool. I mean, Trickery was already mandatory, right? You're not getting away from Trickery. So, yeah, now you, I mean, you obviously, you needed it before, but now you need it even more, right? So, yeah, this is, act, this is honestly one of the harshest. This is pretty brutal, man, right? Like, th this is fucking rough. Okay, and yeah, you know, I th we saw Fayla talking about this earlier, that maybe, like, Rifle will be good now, like, Deadeye actually kind of benefits, because Deadeye doesn't really get hurt by this that much, right, because I believe Fayla actually plays Rifle and then SD, so he plays Rifle um, and Sword Dagger uh, on his Deadeye build, instead of the Shortbow, so yeah, like, now Rifle will be able to kind of compete with the mobility with its leaping around and stuff like that, but yeah, this is actually, this is a little bit harsh, man, like, th th this is arguably maybe a little bit too much, right, y you could... You, you could maybe just, like, have the initiative, like, instead of having to do this, like, maybe reduce the range or something like that. Or, uh, I don't fucking know, but, yeah, it's, um, it's pretty, that's a, that one's an, that one's an oofy. It means that Thief might not be able to escape as easily, because it will be using its initiative in the fight, and then maybe it doesn't have eight to actually disengage. You can't really double cast this particularly effectively either, um, so you can't, like, double port away. Again, reducing your mobility, reducing your escape potential, right? And, you know, we even saw this, like, with Power of, right? Like, Power of will have an easier time kind of chasing, and other classes will have an easier time chasing Thief down as well. And, of course, in general, Thief will just move around the map a little bit slower. You still have Shadow Portal, right? You still have great mobility, like, great swiftness, great escapability with your Daredevil dodge to break out of immobilizers and chills and cripples. You still have that, but you know, you've got less dodges, you've got less damage on, on the rev steel as well, which again kind of makes rev better in PvP, right? By default, right? Uh, and you also just have less sustain too, right? Because you have this plasma nerf there as well, again, which kind of brings Mesma. But Thief changes again. I'm just going to underline this, guys. I'm going to say this really, um, guys, we're going to look at the camera. I'm actually going to go big, right? 
I'm gonna go big. Hang on. Hi. Hello, thief mains. Okay? I know you're very mad about this, but we'll make this very, very clear. Thief is still good. And if I had to put money on it, I would probably say that most high-level teams, if not all of them, are still gonna play thief. So, don't cry on the forums. Otherwise, we're gonna make fun of you, right? And you're gonna look very, very silly, right? Thief is still good. Don't worry about it. Go get your legend ranked. Go win your monthly AT. Stop complaining about it and just get good, okay? Maybe now you're gonna not just get completely carried by your class mechanics. So, there it is. There's the real talk. Game over. Okay, what are we doing now? Warrior! So, Warrior, oh! This class is actually kind of, um become fairly controversial, kind of sprung into relevance in PvP, and, uh, well, it, it's been quite the obnoxious thing, and, look, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna say this, guys, right? Roy is a big GVG player, World of Soul player, pair of the community, all that kind of stuff, and let's be clear here, guys, he's been very depressed about the game recently, hasn't really been enjoying World vs. World, right? But, he said that these changes, like the damage nerfs up top, and the warrior nerfs here as well, to Winds of Disenchantment in particular, I would imagine, has actually made him excited to play the game again, to play World of Sword again. So that should tell you a lot, right? I think this is a great change. So, let's talk about Winds of Disenchantment. Winds of Disenchantment, what, um, it, its functionality has been kind of bubbled around a little bit, yeah. Because it used to be, it, basically it's reverted now. This is how it, its original form was. What it does is, you have a short cast time, then you drop like a giant yellow bubble that um, rips boons every second, AoE, right? And five targets, it used to be ten targets, now it's five. And it also prevented any boons from being applied, right? Which was obviously an amazing effect for World vs. Sword, because if you lose stability, for example, you can't get it back. And then you get trapped in the bubble and you die. So this was very, very oppressive. But what was extra spicy about it was that it was channeled. So what you would do is you would basically run at the enemy team with a bubble. And uh, unless they interrupt you, the bubble will essentially follow you around. And it's kind of difficult to get out of it unless you interrupt the warrior. Which is not trivial because the warrior can apply stability you know, from you know their own group, for example. Can give the warrior stability. The warrior can apply itself to be with balance stance, right? All that kind of stuff. It can just be difficult to shut them down. So, this now means that you're going to have to be very careful about your bubble usage. You'll have more counterplay to bubble, because you can move out of it quicker, right? And disengage from the bubble there as well. Um, it's going to promote DPS warrior as well, because now you you know, you know don't have to channel it, so you can start using your hammer skills, right, to CC. Well, not doing damage, but you can use great stuff for damage, all that kind of stuff, right? And it kind of just, again, it's just going to nerf the support a little bit, because we see that, you know, you used to play support warrior, because you just basically play minstrel, so you're really, really tanky and you never die. And again, this means that if we see DPS warrior, the warriors are going to be easy to kill, so you can shut their bubbles down as well, like interrupt the bubble more. They're gonna have to be careful, but they also do more damage, right? So this is just a great change here as well. Like a really, really good change to Winds of Disenchantment, I think. Like, I think the idea of having it channelable was actually not a bad one. Like the intention was that you could like easily CC the warrior. And that does work when the warrior like solo pushes you. You can shut that. If the warrior like leaps in, you can try and CC them and interrupt their bubble. The trouble is, is that's very, very hard to do. Like when they're in the Zerg and they're just running at you with two or three bubbles. Like that's really, really hard to actually like target that warrior and specifically interrupt them. So I think this is actually the superior design for World of Sword. And it's, it's going to make the game... Uh, pretty damn nice there as well. And we see just, again, the boon rip. This is actually kind of one of the, one of the few boon rip things we've seen kind of semi-nerfed here. It's more frequent. Like, breaking jumps is an AoE boon rip, guys. Having it be four was just stupid. Like, four AoE boon rip. I mean, come on. What were they thinking, guys? That's insane, right? It also did a lot of them. They also um, made it do, like, pretty significant damage in PvE, and it still does. But, unfortunately, not in Wolves. So they actually reduced... Well, they actually increased the damage um, to 0.5 in Wolves so to compensate for the lack of boon removal, which I think is actually fair. Like, and, and they're trying to push DPS Warrior again, right? They want Damage Warrior to be good. Instead of this, like, having, like, another support in the composition, which is a more exciting build to play, and I think the players prefer it. So, this is definitely listening to the player base here, and I love that. And the cooldown's down, too. So, you did. You get to press loads of fucking buttons, man. You get to press loads of buttons. It's fun. It's good. That uh, is damn, damn good indeed there. So, yeah. Again, sword changes. Like, the Warhorn changes. Ah, uh, you know. Uh, I, I, uh, uh, I kind of, um... I, I actually kind of didn't mind that Warhorn was 10 targets in, in World Sword. This is more like a standardization thing. It kind of got caught in the crossfire a little bit. I thought it was kind of cool that, um... That Roaring Rill kind of um, made it so that the Warhorn gave 10 target barrier, 10 target vigor, in Wolves had removed all the combis there. I think that was actually okay. Uh, it wasn't like, it wasn't nearly as obnoxious as stuff like, um, you know, the, the Tempest shouts, like being like, like 100,000 healing, right? Or anything completely stupid like that. But, and fair enough. It's more of like a standardization thing. It, by the way, they made it baseline in PvE. So, dude, like, I, what? 
Th this really has me thinking, by the way, about some kind of like support warrior, like might stack a build um, for Spellbreaker or something like that, maybe, or like some kind of build in PVE where you actually stack a lot of might and like Warhorn buff people as well, like some kind of support warrior. Because bear in mind, guys, like charge, um, charge in PVE is like a 25% damage modifier for a few attacks. So it actually is a decent DPS increase. And again, 10 target vigor, 10 target barrier is a strong effect. Like, Warhorn is like a baseline good weapon in PvE now. Like, is that gonna be meta? Ah, I mean, probably not, right? Like, it's fun, you know, like, you could maybe play around with it, but yeah. And it also frees up, you can actually take, like, the Might Stack trait as well, I believe. A little bit easier, kind of frees up that trait line, because you don't really need to take that trait so much in PvE, because, like, just the 10 target aspects is the main thing you wanted there. It, However, it does still apply the extra boons, right? Like, if we take a look at this trait here, um, you can see that it actually gives Fury and Resistance, so you probably still want this trait with the additional concentration um, slapped on top of that as well, so it doesn't really change much. In, it, honestly, it probably doesn't really change that much um, for... Uh, for PVE, right? Like, um, uh, for the for the warrior balance. But, you know, it, you know, it, it's, it, it doesn't, yeah. It's good for world versus world uh, as well. Of course, that doesn't really change PV, PvP that much uh, at all. But, don't worry about PvP, because that is getting changed as well. Vigorous shouts, basically, uh, over 33%. Oh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, like, over 33% um, healing coefficient reduction. To the limit, base healing is down. And you don't get a double dodge from that too. And they're trying to, again, kind of push DPS warrior up, the side node warrior, by making might makes right, which is a trait that whenever you gain might, you gain some endurance back and you gain some healing. They're trying to buff that up a little bit. And that's a significant amount of extra sustain there as well. Like, And you know what's interesting is that when we see stuff like Renegade getting nerfed and, the, and Nades getting nerfed and Thief getting nerfed, this essentially buffs every other class that isn't those classes, right? So stuff like the side node warrior, um, it might start rearing its head. Because actually, fun fact, guys, like, uh, I, this never really kind of made it into competitive play just yet, but warrior has been experimented with, actually. Um, like, the worms were playing around with a side node warrior, like the spellbreaker build, and this has now essentially been double buffed, right? It's been buffed with Mike's Ray, right? So it's got more sustain, and it's not going to have to worry about the thief as much. And it's not going to have to worry about Cal Renegade as much, right? Because uh, that has now been reduced in effectiveness. And, you know, you might see different builds come through. So the Warrior might get better. Will Warrior now get, like, mega, mega good? Um, I'm not entirely convinced yet. But I think it will definitely see some experimentation here. And support Warrior getting enough? Like, there's... Oh, I have a complaint here, guys. I have a complaint! Why is full counter not getting nerfed, okay? And when I say full counter, I don't think full counter needs to get nerfed on, like, every single warrior build. In particular, I think revenge counter is just very, very obnoxious. It's so obnoxious that some warriors are now running Sage Amulet with less healing because the scaling is nerfed quite significantly on Vigorous Shouts, um, which is, you know, the main healing of the warrior, right? This ability is A's. Revenge counter, guys. Um, it gives you resistance when you land a full counter. Okay. Uh, the day's duration is still ridiculous. Like two seconds going up to three seconds when you run the Savagery Sigil, which you do run on Support Warrior. And also transfers conditions as well. And slows and cripples and gives you protection, right? This ability is disgusting, right? However, just the straight up nerf to the sustain might be enough to kind of shuffle it off or at least push it into a more balanced state. So I'll take it, guys. I'll take it, right? I will. I will. At least for the time being. Uh, but yeah, I, I honestly, I would still like to see... Um, I would like to see a revenge counter address. Like, maybe reduce... Maybe make it... Maybe make it, like, the shade trait on Necro. So if you take revenge counter, it, like, increases the cooldown of that trait. Kind of disincentivizing you to take it. Because I, I think it just gets used way too often. It's way too hard to punish a player for using that. Gives the warrior so much sustain. And just so much counter pressure as well. Like, for the team. Now, to be clear, I think you need to be very careful with a change like that, actually. Because with the sustain going down significantly... Like, also, bear in mind, guys. Like, the, to the limit gives your allies dodge dodges back as well, and two dodges back, that's a massive double dodge on your heal skill, and a massive heal, right, that is a significant change, right, like, to not ha only have one dodge now, the healing goes down, and your shout healing goes down too, so the sustain on warrior is down a lot, maybe that is actually enough, right, that is actually enough to do that, but I still think warrior could maybe take a look, but if this is enough, I'll live with it, guys, I'll live with full counter, because I imagine that will be a, a more complicated change to implement, right, they need, might need to change some mechanical functionality, right, and kind of play with the actual traits, the functionality a little bit more there, so I can accept this, I think this is okay, and, and we, you know, we've already seen this, like, Tempest has started coming back up again, like, because of, after it got overshadowed by warrior uh, for a while at least, so, yeah, I, I think support warrior is definitely going to be in a good spot. Like, it will still see play, I think, but it will be more of, like, a team preference, maybe even a comp-dependent thing. Like, you, you know, and I think this is really important, too. Like, I think we're going to need to start seeing people actually adjust their comp based on the map and based the enemy team a lot more. It's not, like, one size fits all. Like, previous patch that you would always run warrior, right? Now, maybe, sometimes you want to run Tempest. Maybe, like, Tempest into, like, very heavy comedy comps, and maybe you want to run warrior into, like, more mixed comps, right? Like, and, and then maybe, you know, uh, Tempest into pure power as well, right? And maybe we see core guardians start to 
come up if Guardian gets buffed, um, you know, a little bit down the line. Because Core Guardian is nearly good as well in the support role. Nearly good. You know, people like Maiden Boon Sam uh, playing this build very effectively. He's a very skilled player on it, and he really makes it work. Um, you know, it does have its weaknesses, and it can be a little bit focused. It's, it has no counter pressure, right? You can kind of focus it down and obliterate it, but, you know... Yeah, it's actually nearly good. And I think if we had three viable supports, that would be awesome. I would love to see that. That would be so, so cool. Like, we just start to see this diversity, like this range of cards. Instead of just, like, oh, it's another Renegade game. Oh, they've got a Thief. Oh, they've got that. Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. So, yeah, this is very, very exciting, guys. I, very, very exciting indeed. I think they've made some great changes here uh, to Warrior. Like, again, it's still not bad. It's still good. Um, the World versus World was, guys, wins is still going to be good in World versus World, right? It's still going to be a powerful effect um, to actually go for this. Like, believe me, it will still be important. But maybe it won't be mandatory. Maybe you, you know, you won't, you won't actually be able to get away with maybe not running so many Warriors. Maybe only run one or two, right? To like really kind of lock down a location. I think that's good. I think, you know, even if wins isn't good, you can still run Banner, which is a perfectly good skill in World versus World. You can like rally up your team stomp enemies as well that's another approach you can go for i i think i don't think it's good when you have these mandatory abilities like wins was mandatory right stuff like thief was mandatory right you know what i mean like i don't think that's good to have that i think it's really good to have some variety now mesmer i think still needs some more changes and we actually i'm really surprised to not see mesmer changes here like we actually don't see even one mesmer change, which is very unusual to me i don't know why exactly that was happening i think maybe they don't want to do like um a, like a crazy amount of um they don't want to do like loads of changes all in one go. They want to see the meta kind of settle. I I'm honestly really curious. I wonder if they're planning on doing another patch relatively soon. I, I would love to talk to CMC about this. Seriously. I would love to talk it to it. Uh, talk, to talk to it. Talk to it. Yeah, it, he, it, dude, he's a fucking force of nature. It definitely isn't it at this point. But yeah, I would love to talk to CMC about it. I'd love some communication, actually, if they're planning on another patch. Because you'll notice that there are just like some flat-out cards that didn't get touched, right? Um, you know, in PvP, Guardian didn't get touched, right, for example. Um, uh, in PvP, Necro didn't get touched, right? Uh, in in PvP, well, anywhere, Ranger didn't get touched. Um, you know, you know that this kind of thing. We're seeing some classes that are, Mesmer didn't get touched either, right? Like... There are some cards that have been conspicuously left out, if that makes any sense, guys. Like, it, it's almost suspicious that they aren't being mentioned here, right? I, I'm just kind of planning. I'm just thinking, like, are they going to do some other stuff? Like, maybe early next year? Maybe even in a month's time? Oh, they, they won't do it in a month. Well, that is next. Actually, like, dude, oh my god. It's December. It's just hit me. Where's my bloody Christmas hat? Look, look, guys, seriously. I want CMC photoshopped onto Father Christmas, guys, right? Like, it, you know, it's come early this year. It absolutely has. But yeah, um, I wonder if they've got some other stuff brewing. I suspect it. Yeah. Poor old Ranger getting nothing. Mesmer getting nothing there as well. Uh, so yeah, unlucky for you guys. But wow, what a fantastic patch. What a fantastic patch for all of these classes here, guys. I really, really love to see that. That is some really, really cool stuff here um, from ArenaNet. Well done to CMC. I think we're going to see a lot more variety um, in PvP from this, like people trying out new builds and coming up with new strategies. I think there's more work to be done. Like, I think, um, you know, uh, stuff like Shadow Watts on Thief could use a look. Maybe Renegade still needs a little bit of a look at as well. Uh, just like the Kala baseline kit might need to get a little bit of a, a wallop. I'd love to see Firebrand and Core Guardian, uh, or particularly maybe just Core Guardian changes to make Core Guardian a little bit better um, as well. Uh, Hollow is still going to be perfectly fine. Ellie, I think Ellie could use some love. Uh, particularly Weaver for PvP. But then again, guys, like now that Thief is being nerfed, right? And now that NG is being nerfed, maybe Weaver actually kind of is improved by that because every class that isn't the class that got nerfed essentially gets buffed. Particularly seeing as uh, Hollow was a really big problem for Weaver and so was Thief. Like with those two problems out of the way, you might start to see it kind of come back, right? Um, into the mixer a little bit. The side node of Weaver is something we haven't seen for a very long time. But now you do. Maybe you do now, right? Like th there is definitely that possibility. But I don't, yeah, we, I, I could talk about this for ages. So I think we're just going to kind of say, wow. Well done, CMC, guys. Awesome job there from the build breaker uh, himself. I am really impressed. I, I was not expecting this. I was not expecting this at all. Okay? I was doing like 12 changes, like little tweaks. But these aren't just tweaks. These are big changes. Right? Like they were underselling it. Arena undersold and over-delivered it. Because they didn't really communicate that this was even happening. They It was kind of like I was talking to the devs a little bit. And you know, we have conversations. Right? We have this dialogue. There's a balance discord where the devs communicate. There's a world versus world one where similar things happen there as well. Um, so 
I wasn't expecting this. This is a really, really great change. Uh, I, yeah, I was expecting dragon response missions. And, you know, set an entire amulet is gone now as well. Very, very impressive. And that's what I've got to say with the balance. Okay, everyone's won it. PvE's got some spice. World vs. World's got some spice. And PvP has got some spice too. I cannot even remember the last time all three game modes got overwhelmingly positive changes in one patch. That is impressive. Well done, Arena.